Hello and welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the show where we can turn a head full of facts into a whole sack full of cash. Already making a start in that direction is Richard Ronaldson from Bangor in County Down. Uh, he returns from last time. Richard is a chartered accountant working in the finance department of the court service where they collect fines and help manage money belonging to minors until they reach the age of 18. Wife Nicola is back with us in the audience, trying to keep her away. They've been together for 17 years, but they clearly don't believe in rushing things because they didn't get married until the turn of the millennium. They are travelaholics, so a decent win on the show might mean a bit of time out to see even more of the world, especially North America. In fact, you've been to 20 out of 50 states? 20, yeah, yeah. And you want to see the rest? 20, I'm counting, yeah. Do you like it over there? Yeah, no, it's good. That's, uh, I suppose Nick likes the shops. Funny that. I like <laughs> Las Vegas. Now, this is, we talked about this last time. This is bizarre. You re oh, Nicola recently talked to a fortune teller yep. who said you'd become a millionaire at the age of 35. That's right. And how old are you now? I am 35. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right, well, let's see. You're in the right place. When the klaxon sounded at the end of the last show, uh, Richard wasn't exactly a millionaire. He barely got started, but he has guaranteed himself £1,000. And the good news is he has not yet touched a single lifeline. That means he can still go 50 50. He can phone a friend, or he could ask this rather splendid looking audience. Richard, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So you got a thousand. You're just yep. ten little right answers away from a million, and you've got three lifelines. This is question number three for £2,000. Who married the Canadian Autumn Kelly in 2008? Peter Phillips, Robbie Williams, Callum Best, Jude Law. OK, well, I knew it was someone who was royal, and the only member of the royalty there is uh, Peter Phillips. So, final answer, Peter Phillips. It's the right answer. Welcome back. You've got £2,000. <laughs> He's Princess Anne's son. Question number four is for £5,000. You still have not yet touched any lifelines. Have a look. Sean Locke is best known as what kind of entertainer? Magician. Puppeteer. Comedian. Singer. Um, he's a comedian, Chris. That'll be comedian then. Yep, uh, definitely comedian. Final, Final answer. answer. Yep. It's the right answer. You got five thousand pounds. <laughs> okay, listen. You have five thousand pounds. You're in good shape. You have three lifelines untouched. Question number five. You can double your money here for ten thousand pounds. Here it comes. In the Harry Potter books, what are silver arrows and fire bolts? Comets, broomsticks, magic spells, wands. I've never read a Harry Potter book, and uh, I haven't seen too much of the films. It's because you haven't got kids. Exactly. It's true. Um, so. And I knew this was going to be a wee weak spot that I had. But I reckon probably the audience will have read Harry Potter. Hopefully. <laughs> I think we may be about to find out. Actually. Yeah, I think so. I, I have an idea, but I would be a, a complete guess, so I'm going to have to ask the audience. This right, audience, your chance to shine. First lifeline that Richard's needed. It's for £10,000. This is the question. In the Harry Potter books, what are silver arrows and fire bolts? A, comets. B, broomsticks. C is magic spells. D is wands. All vote now. Fifty-seven percent are saying broomsticks. Uh, Nine percent, quite small. Uh, say comets. Fourteen percent magic spells. Twenty percent wands. Now you had a little inkling. You told me. Yep. 
And what are you going to say it was? I hope my inkling would have been warned. Still might be. Hmm. It's just I know the broomstick that Harry had was a, a Nimbus 3000 or something like that, I think. And that was... That could be completely wrong. Seven percent is a lot. Yeah. Yes. I'm going with the audience. <laughs> so yes, what? You're saying to me broomsticks. I'm saying broomsticks. Final answer. Final answer. You had £5,000, and you could have used another lifeline. Yep. You didn't need to. They're right. You've got £10,000. Are you really an angel? Whether they have to move heaven and earth. I don't know how I'm going to get them in the same room together. Maybe it was an airplane hangar or something like that. This duo will always deliver. To tell you the truth, the guy upstairs does all the hard work. I mean, it just has to be a miracle. There's just no other explanation. Now, I've been blessed, you know. Amen. Now, that's what I call angel. Join their journey on the highway to heaven. Weekdays from 8 a.m. on Great TV. Every moment, all new Lexus NX self-charging or plug-in hybrid. Deliveroo presents The Order. You've now crossed over into the pizza zone. A window of pizzeria anticipation. Your mind has melted into mozzarella. Pizza, 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 pizza. <laughs> Go on, do a little pizza dance. Dance round and round like a pizza. Oh, that was quick. Mm, nice jacket. Oh, bingo. Deliveroo. Food. We get it. What's your little piece of warmth? For me, it's when I'm on tour with my favourite band. During my cosiest movie nights in. And for me, it's that moment to myself whilst out walking with the dogs. Were this original, your little piece of warmth. Would you like one? New Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink. No budge vinyl color. Resists transfer up to 16 hours. Only from Maybelline. If I fix their UK prices, so even if my bills go up elsewhere, I've... You have 10 grand. You still have two life like this and you're in good shape. And it's in the stars. You will become a millionaire at the age of 35. <laughs> Um, question number six is for £20,000. Here it comes. What is the relationship of the two main characters in the film? Whatever happened to Baby Jane? Sisters-in-law, cousins, mother and daughter, sisters. Seen the film? Nope. OK. Any idea what it's all about? Um, two relatives. Yes. Um, probably female. Yes. Probably need to fine-tune it just a little bit more. <laughs> Relationship of two main characters in the film, whatever happened to Baby Jane. Sisters-in-law, cousins, mother and daughter, sisters. You've got two lifelines. You can phone a friend. You can go 50-50. Yep. My first thinking... Um, no, I won't say. What? Yeah, I was... The first thing I thought of was sisters, but no, I'm not so sure. You could get rid of two of them. Yeah. Uh, you could find a friend. You've got a movie friend. I have someone who should be good at, at sort of classic movies. Yeah, I'll, I'll phone Paul. Paul, yep. OK. 
Paul who? Uh, Paul Mitchell. What does he do? He's a fellow uh, court service worker. OK. But, he, but he's up on his movies? Yep, his classic movies. Where's he? In Ireland? Yep. OK. Yeah, hello? Paul? Hello. Chris Tarrant? How are you? How are you? I am fine. <laughs> you don't sound so good. Well, I'm... <laughs> Look, I'm better for speaking to you. Well, now, listen, you know that bit where you said, oh, yes, I'll be your phone and friend. I couldn't think yeah. that won't happen in a million years. Yeah. Well, bad news, Paul. Um, I'm afraid it's happened. Oh, dear. Uh, he's doing OK. Richard's doing all right. He's on 10 grand. It does mean he's playing for £20,000. OK. On your answer. All right, mate, but he thinks it's one you'll know. All right. Right, next voice here will be Richard. Okay. He'll tell you the question. Four possible answers. So one of these is the right answer worth £20,000. Richard, fingers crossed, mate. Your time starts now. OK. Hi, Paul. Hi, Richard. What is the relationship of the two main characters in the film Whatever Happened to Baby Jane? Is it sisters-in-law, cousins, mother and daughter, or sisters? Oh, heavens above. I think it might be sisters, but I'm not certain, mate. Yeah. Um, I, know I know it's Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. Yeah. Um, I think they're sisters, Are but they I, I couldn't... Similar ages, them, yeah. Mate. I'm sorry, Richard. No, that's fine. That's great. Thank you. No, it's my pleasure. Yeah, he kind of agreed with me, but I had no basis for <laughs> for my suggestion. Um, I'll take a 50-50, please. OK, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Richard the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Sisters still there, mother and daughter still there. Sisters-in-law gone, cousins yeah. gone. I thought it was sisters. Paul thought it was sisters. Yeah, and two were eliminated and sisters are still there. Yeah. If it had left any other answer other than mother and daughter, I would have been in. But... With the words, don't do anything stupid. Ringing in my ears. Oh, take the money, Chris. Is that your final answer? Yes. Oh, give him a big hand. He goes away <laughs> with ten thousand pounds. You look like you've done 15 rounds with Lennox Lewis. You've just won 10 grand. Yeah. No, I'm happy. If you had said sisters, I would have just given you £20,000. <laughs> he goes away with £10,000. We've still got ten people hoping to take their place in the most profitable seat in the land. All of them attended our recent nationwide audition, so let's meet them. They are... Peter Sutcliffe from Northumberland. Sharon Simon from Glasgow. Evan Summers from County Down. Judith Devine from West Yorkshire. Orion Wilkes from East Sussex. Vicky Lee from Renfrewshire. Russell Scott from County Antrim. Maxine Morris from West Yorkshire. Kenny Killick from East Sussex. Presley Hardy from Northumberland. <laughs> OK, here we go. Time to find out who'll be first to cross the studio floor and face our ever-quizzical computer. We have one question. It'll have four answers, but only one correct order. Let's see if you can punch in that correct order in the shortest possible time. Please, please, as always at this point, no distraction from the audience. They need to concentrate. Here comes their first question. Starting with the smallest, put these standard alcohol containers in size order. Punch bowl, liqueur glass, beer barrel, wine glass. Very smug, we shall see. Ten start. Let's get the right order first. Smallest to largest, let's have a look. It's fairly predictable, liqueur glass. Uh, then it's wine glass. 
then it goes up to a punch bowl, and then it's a beer barrel, so that's the right order. Now, did Ten get it right? I don't think they did. Let's have a look. These got it right. Two got it right. Fastest, Judith Devine, 4.16 seconds. <laughs> Judith! Right, now we have Judith Devine from Pudsey in West Yorkshire. Judith started her career training as a mental health nurse in Leeds, but she now herself trains young mental health nurses for the challenging but rewarding working life ahead of them. She's been married to Detective Inspector Noel Devine for 20 years, and they have two teenage sons, Chris and Kieran. But it's Judith's sister, Louise. Very excitable girl is up there in the audience <laughs> supporting her. Judith has a bit of an obsession about explorer Captain Scott and the Antarctic. So a big win on the show would help realise her dream of following in Scott's footsteps to the South Pole. And who knows, with a million quid in her pocket, she might even pick up a penguin. Twelve <laughs> questions, three brand new lifelines. I'm sorry. One million pounds. Judith, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? OK, back down at the bottom, but hopefully try and whisk you up a lot higher. Question number one is for £500. Here we go. Which of these is the name of a plant? Cyclops. Cyclamen. Cyclopedia. Cyclone. It's cyclamen. You have £500. <laughs> Question number two is for £1,000. Here it comes. The What's an Old Man From is a traditional opening to what kind of verse? Sonnet, haiku, limerick, ode. It's a limerick, Chris. It's a limerick. You have £1,000. <laughs> and you're looking very calm. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to think of all those relaxation and anxiety management techniques that we like the students to do and sort of calm myself down a bit. Do they work? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you enjoy it? Do you love it? Yes, it's, um, it's a very rewarding career and, and I've done 20 years in practice and I think I'd sort of come to the end of my time with that and now I get a lot out of teaching other new mm. nurses and seeing them start as really nervous first years and then by the end they're just fantastic staff nurses to be and it's so rewarding and mm. you can't buy that. It was fantastic. You can buy some things now. You've got £1,000. You have not yet touched any lifelines. Question number three is for £2,000. Who played the Joker in the 2008 Batman film The Dark Knight? Elijah Wood, Josh Hartnett, Heath Ledger, Ethan Hawke. Why are you grinning? Because my son, Kieran, whose fault it is I am here, is What do you mean she's fault you're here? He, he egged me on to fill the for me. Uh, oh, really? Originally for the audition, yeah. Um, oh, so he, he talked Mummy into coming on He talked Mummy into coming on, but he wants to be a film critic when he grows up, so he was very excited about The Dark Knight when it came out. So I know who this is, and I would be shot if I didn't get this answer right. So are you ever going to tell me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, it's the sadly no longer with us, Heath Ledger. Final answer? Yeah. Absolutely right. You've got £2,000. <laughs> she's still grinning away your sister. Is she always like this? Yeah, she's, been, she's really enjoyed herself. She's, Is she? Yeah. You have £2,000. You have three lifelines. Uh, question number four is for £5,000. Have a look. Which of these is not a prime number? 59, 69, 79, 89. Oh, gosh, maths is not my strong point. Mm. I know. All those years at school doing this stuff. <laughs> I know that a prime number is only divisible by itself and one but it's quite well, then. difficult to work that out. Well, um, there's no hurry. 
I think I'm going to have to ask the audience because I, I don't know. But they will know. I know. I know. I have to change my mind. a gasp of horror when you said that. You see, if it was Louise sat here, she'd be fine because she's fantastic at maths. She's an accountant. Is she? Yeah. But she's only one out of the whole lot of them. <laughs> Some of the others can barely tie their own laces. <laughs> Not a prime number. Are you going to ask the audience and trust their answer? I think I'm going to have to, because I, I, I don't know what the answer is to this. Um, I know there is probably a, a really easy way of working it out. Do you want to ask the audience? I think I'm going to have to, because okay. I'm, I'm not sure about this. Let's see what we get. Right, audience, this could be very, very impressive. This is the question. Which of these is not a prime number for £5,000? 59, 69, 79... Or 89? A, B, C, or D, all vote now. Seventy per cent. Say sixty-nine. The thing is you haven't got a clue whether they're clue, right or wrong. But seventy per cent is a great margin. Um, and they look an intelligent bunch, so um, I mean, if I get it wrong, I'm only going to drop to a thousand. If I get it right, I've got the potential to go higher. You see, you're better at maths than you thought. I think I think we've got to go. We've got to go with the seventy, and because it would be a shame to go fifty-fifty. And I'm still going to have the same choice. I.e., I don't know. So <laughs> um, I'm going to trust this lovely audience, and I'm going to kill them if they're wrong. Fair play. So play with their names I'm going with sixty-nine. Final answer. It'll have to be. It'll and have to be. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I tell you, Louise, who oh. you say is so good at maths. Oh, don't. She is one of the 70%. Right. Does that inspire you with great confidence? I hope so. It is the right answer. Oh. You've got £5,000. <laughs> One thing we were talking about, you've got this fascination for Captain Scott. Yeah. Of the Antarctic. Why? I mean, amazing man, but why? Yeah, I mean, it's not just Scott, it's Shackleton and all the other people that went Amundsen. to that. And Amundsen, yeah. Who, who I think... beat them all, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, so, is that where you want to go? You want to go to the Antarctic? I would love to go. I would love to go. I, I have an Antarctica fund, but it doesn't have very much money in it at the moment. Um, might have a bit more. It's got a bit more now. But, How big... Uh, well, I don't know. How, how much money would you need to go... You can't just sort of turn up, can you, on the Oh, bus? no, and you can only go in a certain season. You can only go December to February because the ice flow... Well, we laughingly call their, their Antarctic yeah. summer, yeah. Yeah, but it's... Um, I think what I've got at the moment would get one of us there. Who would you take? No. Take Noel? Oh, yeah. Does he want to go? He hasn't got any choice. OK. <laughs> Detective Inspector, you're off to Antarctica. Yeah. Judith, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, you start immediately by trying to double your money. Question number five is for £10,000. In 2006, what became the West End's longest-running musical? Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Les Miserables, Billy Elliot, Blood Brothers. Oh, musical theatre, not a love of mine, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah... <laughs> I have seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang quite recently. Um, that doesn't help. No, but that's the only one I have seen. Um, You've got a 50-50, you could find a friend. I think I'm going to have to go 50-50. Right, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Judith the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Les Miserables or Billy Elliot? One of those is worth £10,000. That makes it a lot easier because I know Billy Elliot is a fairly recent musical because it came after the film, and I'm actually reading Les Miserables at the moment. I know it doesn't mean it's the answer, but I know Billy Elliot was a recent film. Les Miserables, I think, is a late 80s musical, so 
It's certainly been around a lot longer than Billy Elliot, so I'm going to go with Les Miserables. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got 10,000 pounds. Come on, we're on our way to the Antarctic. You've still got to find a friend. You are two away from 50,000. You're only seven away from a million. Have a look at question number six. This is getting to be serious money. You can mm. double your money here to £20,000. You have a lifeline. Here it comes. What's the name of the world's first national park? Yellowstone, Peak District, Serengeti, Kruger. I, I, I think... I was thinking Peak District, but then I thought... The others are all over the world, and it's unlikely that the first national park would be in this country. Um, Why not? I don't know. Uh, you could find a friend. You've still got that. I think I might have to. Um, it's just it's who? a tough one. I, don't <laughs> I know, who, I know. Who do you know who would know? <laughs> um, I think I'm going to phone Ian. Ian? Yeah. Who's he? Ian's a colleague at work. He's an, an adult nurse tutor. He's, he's a what he's, he's He teaches adult nursing. He's a HIV specialist as well. And he's Why quite, would you know this? He's quite well travelled. He goes all over the world on AIDS conferences and HIV research. So I'm hoping um, that he might know. Hello. Ian. Yes, hello. Chris Tarrant, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Are you calm? <laughs> <laughs> I'm clearly not. Relatively. <laughs> OK, right, well, you know what's happening. Judith's here, she's stuck okay. on a particular question. She's hoping you'll be able to help her. It's worth £20,000, Ian, so it's okay. quite serious business. OK, thank you. Right, next voice is Judith. She'll okay. tell you the question. There are still four possible answers. One of them is the one we want. It's the right answer. OK, okay thank you. Right, fingers crossed, both okay. of you. Judith, 30 seconds, darling, your time starts. Now. What is the, na the, the name of the world's first national park, Ian? Is it Yellowstone, Peak District, Serengeti or the Kruger? The name of the world's first national park. I'm really not absolutely sure. I would edge towards Yellowstone, but I'm not absolutely sure, Judith, I'm afraid. Not 100% sure. OK. That's fine, Ian. Thanks a lot. OK. OK. That doesn't help. Um, I mean, Yellowstone, a very old established park in west of America, um, Peak District. I mean, I, I, the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking actually the first national park in this country was the Lake District. And we've almost discounted Serengeti and the Kruger. Um, Big decision. <sighs> what are you thinking? I'm thinking you only sit here once. And I'm thinking. I think, well, actually, I'm not. I'm here every week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I only sit here once. Yeah. And I'm thinking. Do He's you, saying you? Yellowstone. Are you inclined towards. I don't know where you're going. No, I mean, I mean, initially I thought Yellowstone, then I thought Peak District. You know, Peak District is the odd one out there. The other three are all national parks in, in different countries in the world. And the Peak District, lovely though it is, is in Derbyshire. Yes. Which, you know, do I do I walk away and kick myself when it's Yellowstone, or do I walk away and breathe a sigh of relief when it's the Peak District? Yellowstone. I'll do it. I'll go for it. Because, Final answer. Yeah, a thousand pounds is still a lovely amount of money, and. You know, I would always perhaps say, what if, what if? And if it's wrong, it's wrong. Life goes on. Do you honestly think Yellowstone is not as old as the Peak District? I don't really know. But, hey, we'll have to wait and see. If it it is. isn't. The right answer is Yellowstone. Oh. You've got £20,000. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. You're brave, Jude. As you said, you only sit there once. Now, 
Yellowstone was established the first national park in the world in 1872. Wow. You have 20,000 pounds. That's your last lifeline goal, but it was a good one because he kind of steered you there. Question number seven is for 50,000 pounds. That would be the minimum amount you would leave here with Judith Devine. Wouldn't you be popular when you got back home? Oh, yeah. If you went for it and if you gave me a right answer. If you give me a wrong answer at this point, you lose 19 grand. Okay? Right. Not good. Yep. You do not have to play this question. You can walk away with £20,000 with exactly double what you had about 30 seconds ago. Have a look at it. This is question number seven of a possible 12. You have no lifelines. Here it comes. Which famous oh. horse race? What are you doing? Horse racing. Is that good or bad? <laughs> oh, right. OK, well, we'll soldier on. Which famous horse race was won four times by Desert Orchid? Cheltenham Gold Cup, King George VI Chase, Irish Grand National, Racing Post Chase for £50,000. Judith Devine, here we go. The right answer, Chris, is... I'll take the money. <laughs> How did I know you were going to say that? Now, famous, famous horse. Yeah, I know he's a famous horse, and I was thinking Derby might have come up there. No. But none of those have come up. I have no idea about horse racing. I have not a hope in hell of getting the right answer. And £19,000 is a lot of money to lose, so I think I've, I've, I've pushed my luck a bit. I think it's time to go. Take the money, final answer? I think so, Chris. Yeah, final answer. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. You're a very nice man. We've had a very nice day. She goes away with £20,000. Well played, you. Just because you're here, you know, and just because you kick yourself all the way home to Pudsey, what would you have gone for? Um, probably because it's the only one I have particularly heard of would be the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Oh, no! <laughs> Completely wrong. The right answer is the King George VI oh, chase. So right decision. <laughs> right decision. Yeah. Right. She goes away with twenty thousand pounds. <laughs> There's still nine left to play fastest finger first. So let's see who's next to step into the spotlight, trying for a life-changing sum of money. Nice and quiet, please, as always. Here comes their question. Put these inventions in the order they first became popular. Here they come. Sudoku, Frisbee, Chess, Crossword. OK, let's have a look. This is the right order. Some very worried faces either side of me. Let's have a look. This is the right order. Then let's see how they actually did. Uh, chess, supposedly in the 6th century. Uh, crosswords, early 20th. Frisbee in the mid-20th century. Sudoku in the very late 20th century. So that's the right answer. Now, out of nine, I don't think nine got it right at all. These got it right. Then let's find out who's fastest. Maxine Morris in 4.55 seconds. Maxine! What a woman! Wow! Good girl. Now, you ready for this? A million yes. pounds there, we're waiting to be one. Around the dining room, that's right. Right, now we have Maxine Morris, who lives in Huddersfield, not far from Pudsey, in West Yorkshire, although she was actually born in Penang, in Malaysia. Uh, Maxine is head of human resources at a teaching hospital in Leeds. She and husband Paul have been married for nine years. They have three sons, 16-year-old Sam and nine-year-old twins, Ben and Jack. Up in the audience, though, is Christine, a close friend who helps Maxine tick things off her very long things to do to prove I'm more than just a mum list. That's right. OK, which we will explore. <laughs> As ever, Maxine will be offered up to 12 questions by the computer. If all are answered correctly, then Maxine wins a million. It really is as simple as that. And there's help at hand from those awfully nice lifelines. 50-50, phone a friend and ask the audience. Maxine, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, question number one is for 500 quid. You have three lifelines. Here we go. 
Which of these animals has the most northerly habitats? Giant panda, hyena, polar bear, llama. I think I'm going to go with polar bear. Good plan. One. You've got 500 pounds. <laughs> Right, Maxine, last point at which you could go home with nothing. I'm sure you won't be positive. You have all three lifelines. You probably won't need them either, but they are there. Question number two would guarantee £1,000. Here it comes. Which of these was once the traditional design on a convict's uniform? Arrows, triangles, squares, circles. Well, in all the films, they show them with arrows, so I'm going to go for arrows. We're going to go for arrows, and we're right. We have £1,000. <laughs> Right now I'm up here. What's your plan then? What's your plan? You've got a thousand pounds, but when you were sent off by your old man and the three boys, what was the sort of overall thinking? Well, my plan really is to make sure that he goes white with the panic of what I'm risking. So I, I'm, I'm far riskier than he ever is. So I'm just going to see how the questions come. So you're just here basically to frighten your husband? That's the plan. <laughs> Good plan. Interesting plan. <laughs> OK. Um... Things to do to prove that I'm more than just a mum list. That's right. Why do you feel inspired to do that? There's so much more to life than just the work that you do, and, and I really wanted to come to the end of my life having done all the things that I wished I'd done. So I wrote them all down, and, and I'm gradually ticking them off one by what one. What sort of things? Some of them are about travelling to places, some of them are about learning new skills. I'm trying to push the physical ones at the moment while I still can, so... <laughs> <laughs> what about travelling? Where would you like to go? I'd like to visit the Galapagos Islands. I'd like to go back to where I was born, because I left there when I was six weeks old, and I'd like to go back and see what the place is like. OK. You have all three lifelines. You are ten away from one million, Maxine. Question number three is for £2,000. What was the title of Take That's 2006 single, their first for ten years? Are you a Take That fan? I was back in the day. I'm not sure I'm going to know this one, though. More recent ones. OK, have a look at the options. Kindness, chastity, diligence, patience. None of them are jumping out at me. Although, the longer I look at it, one of them is. Are you going to tell me which one? No, because I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to ask the audience, and I don't want to lead them. OK. I think I am going to use the Ask the Audience, please. We are? Yes. OK, right, audience, this is for £2,000. First lifeline Maxine's needed. This is the question. Tailor made for youthly, sprightly people like yourselves. Let's have a look. <laughs> this is the question What was the title of Take That 2006 single, their first for 10 years? Now, A is kindness, B, chastity, C, diligence, D, patience. A, B, C, or D, it's for £2,000. All vote now. <laughs> 95% are saying Ooh. patience. And, and you were saying, I think I've got an inkling, but I'm not going to tell you. And I know they all say that, but that was the one you, that I was thinking. You. <laughs> you. So I will have to take that, won't I? That's definitely patience. Well, it's quite high. It is. OK. Final answer? Final answer. Patience. Yes. It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> £2,000. Question number four is for 5000 You have a 50-50. You can phone a friend. Have a look. Tell me what you want to do. What is the mythological name of the golf club which staged the 2008 Ryder Cup? Hades, Odin, Zeus, Valhalla. I bet you're not a golfer. I'm not a golfer. But 
No, there isn't a but. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought the way your voice was intoning yes. there was going to be a but. That was whilst I was considering which of my friends might know this, because I don't think a 50-50 is going to help me. Can we please call Steve? Steve? Yes. Steve who? Steve Baldrins. Ah, oh, silly me, I should have guessed. Who's, yes. um, who's he? Where does he live? He lives in Hertfordshire and he's the man who introduced me to my husband. OK, is that good? Very good. OK. Right, we'll ring Steve. Uh, tell him a question, four possible answers. See what happens, it's worth 5,000. Is he a golfer? No, he, he's, he knows his sport a bit. Hello? Steve? Yeah. Chris Tarrant, how are you? I'm very well, how are you, Chris? Well, I'm good. Um, so, I've got Maxine here, that's obviously why I'm ringing you. Excellent. Uh, she's stuck on a particular question. Uh, it's worth £5,000, all four answers are still there, and she's pretty sure you'll know it. <laughs> OK. We shall see. I think you might. Right, next question will be Maxine. She'll tell you the question, four possible answers for five grand. Maxine, fingers crossed, my darling, your time starts now. Steve, what is the mythological name of the golf club which staged the 2008 Ryder Cup? Was it Hades, Odin, Zeus or Valhalla? Um, it was Valhalla, Max. How I'm sure are you, certain. Steve? You're certain. Thanks, Absolutely Steve. Certain. Valhalla. Good man, thank you. Okay, good luck. Thanks, life. bye. I love that man. <laughs> you married the wrong one. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. No, okay, don't love him. <laughs> he might be wrong. He's not wrong. If he says certain, he's certain. Right, you want to play? Yes, I want to play. Final and answer. I want to play. Valhalla, final answer. You don't know anything about golf at all. I don't need to, I've got Steve. You're very confident in Steve. I am. You have just won £5,000. Yeah. Good night, Steve. <laughs> right, serious business. You want to frighten him to death between 75 and 150000 I do. You've got five grand. Question number five, you can double your money up to £10,000. Here it comes. What name did Mylene Class give to her daughter, born in 2007? Do you know this? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, you just had a look on your face like you were all excited. OK, let's have a look. Lana, Ava, Rita, Marilyn. I was hoping that when the answers came up, that I would have some level of clarity about it. But I am going to have to use that 50-50, I think. Right. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Maxine the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Now, what's that done? Now, that has thrown me into turmoil. Turmoil? <laughs> that has thrown me into turmoil. <laughs> because Ava was the one that I thought most likely when they first came up. Right. I thought Rita was one of the unlikely ones. So now I'm sitting here with a trip to Disneyland in the bank. Yes. Or gambling. You've got five grand. It's worth 10,000. You would lose 4,000 pounds here if you gave me a wrong answer. You go back to 1,000. I am going to play it. And I'm going to say B, Ava. You haven't a clue. I know. I know. <laughs> what name did Mylene Class give to her daughter born in 2007? Ava or Rita? You got £5,000. Right. Ava, final answer. Go. Why would you call a child Ava Class? Oh, don't, please. No, but why would you? Because it's better than Rita Class. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. You think you're right? No, I don't at the moment. You are? Oh. You've just won £10,000. <laughs> <laughs>